Okay, um, so now let me introduce our next guest speaker. You know him well. He is the chair of the Fairfax County Democratic Committee, and he too makes some time to come and help us understand the process of the reorganization in these difficult times. Please welcome Brian Bram, chair of FCDC. Hi, everyone. Thanks. Uh, um, I'm happy to be here and, and explain kind of a little bit of what's going on. Um, at, you know, we, Sean talked a little bit about the DPVA, the, the Democratic Party of Virginia uh, kind of stuff. Um, you know, we're organized under the, the auspices of, of, the, of the DPVA, under the party, their party plan, which is their governing document, that says that every two years between December 1st and January 15th, uh, the city and county committees reorganized. So uh, we're we're heading into that as required by by DPVA, and uh, and that starts. If you first first up, if you don't listen to anything else, go to FairfaxDemocrats.org, click on the reorg button or FairfaxDems.org/reorg, um, and there's uh, information there. So if <laughs> if you if you don't listen to anything else, uh, do that. Uh, because it, it lists out kind of what's going on. The first thing is you need to apply to join. So if you're a member of FCDC right now, all of that ends in December and we kind of, everyone gets kicked out and we all have to, we all have to reapply and rejoin. So um, the deadline to apply to be an FCDC member is December 1st at 5 p.m. And that means you need to have a complete application. That means you need to have the application filed and payment for a waiver. So uh, we do have a seventy-five dollar uh, a, a fee, or, or whatever you want to call it, uh, for our membership for two years. Um, but if you are unable to pay that, there is a there, we have a waiver process. If you if you need that, reach out to Maritza; she'd be happy to to help you do that. Um, but my if you want to do that, my suggestion is do that early uh, and get that done out of the way so that your application is in and complete before December first at five p.m. The next thing that we have kind of on the timeline of things is uh, we actually have redistricting. So right now you talk about, we don't know what congressional districts are. We don't really know what our county districts are going to be either. So um, there are going to be some changes to, to uh, you know, where everyone in the county is, what districts they're in. Uh, I, I am just based off of my conversations with supervisors and not anticipating dramatic changes, but there will be some changes just because they need to make changes to balance the, the districts based off of the census information. So um, the, the Board of Supervisors is currently scheduled to make their, their final vote on this on December 7th. And hopefully at that point, we will know what the new districts are. There are some other reviews that happen after that, but hopefully the decision will know then and we can kind of say, yes, you're in Mount Vernon or no, you're somewhere else. Um, from there, so from there, we are going to hold virtual unassembled caucuses. Now, that's probably a little bit confusing, but the way that we get elected as FCDC members is we have a, we have caucuses. The voters, the Democratic voters of Fairfax County can elect us to be members of the Democratic Party uh, for Fairfax County or the Democratic Committee for Fairfax County. Um, the, the way that typically works, though, is we don't have, uh, we set a number of members. We have 130 members per district. So if you, if we exceed that number, then we will have a vote. And that's how we decide who are voting members of the committee. Um, in practice, most districts don't meet that number. Uh, and we've had very few, uh, recently we've had very few uh, caucuses to, to elect people to be members. So really, hopefully the big, the big problem or the, you know, the big thing is apply, um, and we don't actually need a caucus, but if we do have a caucus, it will be what we're calling a virtual unassembled, uh, unassembled caucus, um, which really just means you will go to the FCDC website, enter some information, and, and you'll get a, an electronic ballot that you can complete to vote on, uh, on the membership of your district committee. So um, hopefully we won't have that, but if we do, uh, then, then that's, that's our plan for doing that. At that point, we will know who our FCDC members are, right? So everyone's applied. If you're in a district that's underfiled, everyone's elected. If uh, if not, then we have an election and we we actually it, through a caucus and decide who the members are. But at that point, we will know on December 11th who the members of FCDC are. 
And just to reinforce, members of Mount Vernon are, of the Mount Vernon Dems are members of FCDC. We really only kind of, let's say technically exist as the Fairfax County Democratic Committee. Uh, we organize ourselves intentionally by districts because a lot of the, the organization and things that we do, um, it, you know, a, a lot of the precinct operation stuff happens at the local level, so at the local district level. So districts, you know, you're you're a Mount Vernon, if you're a Mount Vernon Dem, you're also a, an FCDC member. This is not a separate application. There's just one application and you're a FCDC member and then a member of the district committee, depending on where you live. Um, so each of the districts is going to hold uh, their reorganization meeting um, between December 14th and December 18th. Mount Vernon, it looks like, has decided on Tuesday, December 14th at 7 p.m. Um, and it looks like that's a Zoom or a hybrid meeting um, that is on Zoom, like we are right now, or in person at the Sherwood Regional Library. Um, and... Um, most of the other districts are just doing a fully Zoom uh, meeting, but th th that was kind of where Mount Vernon ended up. Um, so that's the meeting where we will elect uh, the chair and a secretary for each committee and any other officers that the committee decides to elect, basically. Some, some committees have bylaws that say what they do. Uh, I don't believe Mount Vernon does, but uh, so <laughs> the, the bylaw, FCDC bylaws require that you have a chair and, and a secretary and beyond that, uh, you don't necessarily need to elect officers. And then the other thing that we need to do at a reorganization meeting is approve associate members. Um, so there are people that may elect to just be an associate member of FCDC and not have the kind of, if they basically want to be a card carrying member of the, of the party, but not necessarily have to go to all the meetings and make decisions. So um, we can, if people apply for associate membership in FCDC for the districts, you also are supposed to consider them at that reorganization meeting. Um, and then the, the whole committee, once uh, in, in January 11th, 2022, and this is going to be fully virtual, um, we'll have a, a heavy reorganization meeting uh, to elect uh, the county officers, including myself, and, or well, I guess ch chair, um, regional vice chairs, secretaries, et cetera, um, and, and some vice chairs for precinct ops, uh, voter registration, education, outreach, uh, technology, I'm missing one. Um, but, but we elect those officers, and then we also consider bylaws, uh, potentially consider bylaws changes as well at that meeting. So I know I just said a whole bunch, <laughs> and there might be questions, but biggest things are um, apply to be a, a member, right? But everything, everyone's going to not be a member anymore. So you have to reapply if you want to, if you want to be a member, I personally recommend that you be a voting member. If you, uh, unless you really just don't want to come to meetings, but you're at a meeting right now. So that's probably not you. Um, uh, and then, uh, and then two, uh, you know, we have, we'll have the district meetings and then the countywide meetings and that's, uh, probably about it. So, uh, I, I'm happy to answer questions if there are questions. Or I've answered every question. Hey, Chris. No, I, I didn't really have a question. I just had a, more of a comment. Um, the um, I think we just need to start um, realizing that we need need to, in general, move back to a more of a degree of um, in person activities. Uh, it's very difficult to welcome new people into the party behind a computer screen. And um, the Republicans, I mean, they, 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 took, they took risks that they shouldn't have taken long before a vaccine was out. But the bottom line is they've been, they're alive and kicking and we're still hiding behind computer screens. And it's, and it's a concern. It's a real concern that I have in, in general. Um, so um, I think we need to start really addressing that. And besides the fact that, unless I'm mistaken here, there is absolutely no authority any longer for anything below the DPVA level to be meeting virtually uh, ever since this state of emergency ended. So technically um, we have to do at least hybrid, even that's fuzzy uh, legally, but a virtual meeting, it just isn't legal. And, and especially when you're dealing with caucuses, a caucus is any, any registered voter can participate in a caucus and how, you know, how do you do it? I mean, we, we always, we, we are the, probably the biggest outspoken 
group out there about voter suppression and, and caucuses make it more difficult. I mean, virtually doing it by Zoom makes it more difficult for some. It may make it more accessible for others, but these are these are issues that need to be addressed. So just a general comment on that because- Well, I was there, but, I mean, you were there yesterday when I explained that we're not doing a Zoom caucus. No, 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 I understand. Oh, well, 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 Zoom, I mean, it's a virtual caucus, a virtual. Zoom, Zoom is, I'm just talking, that's the technology. I'm not talking, we're not, I mean, that's technology. Okay, we're not using Zoom for the caucuses. We're not using Zoom at all uh, for, for the caucuses, just to be clear. Um, but but to, to answer your question- Brian, just, just for my notes, what are we doing if we have to have a caucus? Is it 100% in person? A, at, as I said a moment ago, uh, we're having a virtual unassembled caucus. If we are having, if we need to have a vote for your district, the way that it works is people go to the FCDC website. There's a form that they fill out that matches them. As, so anyone who is a voter in the, in the district can do that. There's a form that they fill out that matches them to the voter pile. If we find them, then they uh, then they get a ballot. If we need to look them up, we'll look them up and send them a ballot. And if they need to, if they don't have a computer or something, uh, they can call FCDC to do that as well. So th that's the the process. It is. I I understand. I understand what you're saying, and I and I agree. But the 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 reason that most of the people or most of the districts are doing virtual be is is twofold. One, we are obligated to have kind of full participation to allow as many people to participate in the process as possible, and and to say that we're only having an in-person thing um, right now, especially with reorganization, um, is is not. Uh, is not being the the you know open to the most participation right so um so we are kind of requiring a virtual component to this now that's not saying you can't have and you have elected to have a hybrid and that's fine but um but i i agree I, the 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 reason i think most of the people have chosen virtual is because it's just simpler to to operate if you have a hybrid meeting as we've done before right you have a virtual vote and then you might have an in person in, in person room vote that's different uh, and having to combine it, it's just more complicated to do to have a virtual meeting, right? So uh, I, I think that's why, for the most part, most of the districts have kind of shied away from it and, and have gone to fully virtual for these things. Um, but uh, but I do encourage districts to, whether or not it's the meeting itself, to have in-person events to to help build connections with people and, and have the party building stuff, right? Because, uh, you know, that's we still need that. And that's something that has been missing. But whether that's the meeting itself or whether it's something else, I don't, I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not dictating that. I, but for the reorganization, I am. We, we need to have a virtual component to allow as many people as possible to participate. Thank you, Brian. We have a question from Sara. Sara, can you unmute yourself, please? Hi, hi, Brian. I have a quick question. How are we gonna? Um, how are the votes gonna be handled electronically? I don't think that's kind of been made. Oh, I don't think we've been made aware of how they're going to be handled electronically. For uh, which part of the process? Uh, well, for the election of the chair and things like that. Oh, uh, within a district. Yes. Um, okay. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of that's kind of up to kind of how the meeting itself is run by the district. Um, as as we talked about before, you 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 have you're having a hybrid meeting, so. Um, you'll, you'll probably like, there's a couple different approaches. I don't know exactly, you know, how you all want to do it, but, uh, you know, the way that we've done most of the votes, uh, on here are, is with zoom or on zoom is with zoom polls. And then you would need some mechanism, either hands or ballots to, to, for the people that are in the room, uh, to vote and you'd have to combine those things. Um, it, but I so mean, there are other options gonna, that we're not limited to. It's just, uh, you, you know, it's just it kind of however you all decide to do it. So what you're saying is FCDC is encouraging the vote collection to be taken through polls within Zoom. I'm saying that's how most of the districts are doing it. That doesn't have to be done that way. Um, but, so but that's just I how. Have, I have seven different machines at my house. What I'm hearing is I can log into every single one of them and vote. Well, no, that would be uh, that would be a problem, and 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 I think it would be grounds for you being removed from FCDC if you if you tried to vote more than once in an, in an election. Well, I mean, I know because, it's illegal, but I'm just saying. I mean, it does leave open that 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 possibility. Well, you can. I mean, in there are mind, records. There mind. are. 
there are records after you know after a vote yeah. on on Zoom. There are records, and you could export them. We could see if people voted more than once, and if they did, then then I feel like that would be, um, you know. Okay. <laughs> I, I didn't know there were records. I didn't know there oh, were yeah. records. That's why yeah. I was asking. Like, how do you how do you ensure that everybody only votes once? That's that's kind of my question. Mm -hmm. Well, so it sounds like they're democrats. Once we are Democrats trying We're not to Republicans. reorganize. <laughs> exactly. So now, thank you. We have a question from Antonia. Please, Antonia. Hi, I've got a couple of questions here. Um, you said that when, if I understood correctly, when it gets to 140 people or over 130 people in a district, that um, then you uh, kind of break it up. <laughs> I don't know. Um, that. Uh, that, oh, most districts have 130 members. Is that correct? Or or a district, that's the limit or something? You gave the number 130. Right. So um, in our reorganization resolution, we decided, uh, you know, FCDC decided that we have 130 voting members per district. Uh, okay. So um, no, no district has that many voting members now. Um, okay. So... Uh, you know, it's. Um, I mean, that okay. is what it is. But 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 yes, that that's what the. the okay. We passed in, at the September meeting. We passed a resolution that that uh, that said that FCDC total is comprised of one thousand one hundred seventy members, and that is divided equally among the districts, which makes uh, one hundred thirty. If I can do math. Okay. The other thing you said is you you mentioned in passing is that uh, how the di different districts have um, different, uh, they're organized differently, so to speak. Some have a chair and a secretary or something, and that's it. And then some, uh, as I understand how we do it in Mount Vernon, because I'm not completely understanding it, is that we have several other uh, positions that people are elected to. But um, how do I get a, find a copy of our, the rules and regulations, so to speak, and procedures for um, the Fair FCDC and then one for Mount Vernon, because you also mentioned we don't have, um, uh, Mount Vernon doesn't have descriptions of the job description, so to speak, uh, um, which blows my mind <laughs> that, that we don't have that, but because um, all sorts of things can happen that are flaky and mm -hmm. um, in, my, in my opinion. So how- yeah, so well, so I mean, there's a couple of things. One, obviously, we have, FCDC has its own bylaws. That that's where some of the things that I said came from. Yeah. Um, specifically, that that at a reorganization, you elect a chair and a secretary at the very least. That comes from the FCDC bylaws, uh, okay. which you can found. It's under about us um, on the FCDC website. Okay. Um, if you if you go to if you also go to the FCDC website, there's a, a big blue button on the front page now that talks about reorganization. And if you scroll mm -hmm. to the bottom of that, there's a button that says "Call Call the Caucus and Rules." It's a detailed document that has, you know, all of the rules about how all of this wor works for the county, but it doesn't have it for the for the districts. Mm -hmm. The districts, uh, I honestly believe, I, I know Providence has bi its own bylaws. Um, Selly had bylaws, but I think they've kind of abandoned them <laughs> at this point. I, I don't know that they actually follow them or, or use them at this point anymore. I, I don't know that they even knew that they had them until uh, I pointed that out to them. But um, a, a lot of it kind of operates on tradition rather than on on uh, anything else in terms of which positions are elected in a district. And I can tell you some districts uh, will elect a chair and a secretary and then really basically appoint everyone else or mm -hmm. maybe a vice chair or whatever and kind of appoint everyone else. And then some districts will uh, elect the specific officers to do things uh, like precinct ops and stuff like that. So it's kind of really varies completely from one district to another. Um, and and it's, it's kind of strange how that is, but, um, but there aren't specific rules about how that works. I will say that the other thing that the FCDC bylaw says is that the, the district committee decides. Mm -hmm. So the members of, of the district committee at the reorganization meeting get to decide, you know, if they're electing someone for precinct ops, if they're electing someone for events, if they're electing someone for something else or whatever, right? So um, 
you know, it's really kind of a decision of, of the group at that point uh, on what other officers they elect other than um, the chair and secretary, um, unless they have bylaws that say otherwise. Uh, well, um, I, uh, Chris, uh, Kate, Kate, uh, Chris, Christine is waiting for, uh, take the floor, so please wait. Uh, Christine? Oh, thanks, Maritza. Uh, I just had two two things. I think so far the communication. Uh, Oops, you're on mute. Is that better? Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, I just had two quick things. Uh, I think that the communication this time around has been really good from FCDC and from Mount Vernon. Um, I know last time I had absolutely no idea that my membership had expired. So I think from that perspective, I think you guys are doing a really good job. Um, and then Brian, I wanted to ask uh, just like what happens normally during the renewal process, do you have to, um, do you get reintroduced at both FCDC and at your local organization as well? So, um, you know, where can, there's no vote. So <laughs> you kind of think of it as like an actual election, right? Like to say that, you know, we're electing, instead of electing one member of the board of supervisors, we're electing 130 members of the, of the committee. And if only 110 apply, then everyone's elected by the voters, right? So if, if only one person applies to be the democratic nominee for something, right, then they end up being the Democratic nominee, assuming they have everything else checked. So it's kind of the same type of thing. So, you know, that means that you're a member of FCDC for Mount Vernon. If you go through that process, you apply and and we don't, we haven't overfiled, then you will become a, a member of Mount Vernon at reorganization, uh, and which also means you're a member of FCDC. And that's it. There's no, the, the, the district committee doesn't need to vote on it because you're already you're, you are already elected to be uh, the representatives of the Democratic voters of Fairfax County uh, for Mount Vernon in the county committee. So there's there's no other kind of reintroduction. That we're just kind of back into it. And then after that, we will continually have uh, the, the filling vacancies and, and adding new people that we usually have. Are you doing any other kind of additional outreach to get people to... Um go ahead and do the signups because it's such a short window. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're going to do, a, 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 other than obviously reaching out to people that we, um, that have been members before in, in the past, um, we're going to do, um, a, I mean, we are doing some, some outreach to just kind of partner organizations and whatever. I mean, I would just encourage people on, on the call as well. I mean, if you, if you have people who you think would be interested, you know, nudge them that way as well, right? So we, we have our own networks and uh, in, in, in such show, um, but, but FCDC is trying to do that as well uh, because we want to make sure that everyone knows that the reorganization is happening. Okay, thank you. Kate? Okay, um, we actually, and some of this is covered in the chat a little bit, um, we actually do have pres uh, position descriptions for a variety of vice chair positions. Um, in general, in Mount Vernon, we have elected a secretary, a chair, pardon me, a chair, a secretary, a treasurer, and several of very fairly crucial operational kind of vice chairs like precinct operations, sometimes voter protection. Now for some of the other vice chair positions that would simply be representing Mount Vernon at the FCDC level, the education committee, the, the women's committee, and I'm not discounting these, I'm just listing them off as my brain is pulling them together. Those might be either at reorg or at a future meeting, but we're always very careful to elect some of the major positions. And again, chair, secretary, treasurer, precinct ops, a couple of other ones at the reorganization meeting because we need to know how we're going to be moving forward. So for those who are curious about position descriptions, I've got a draft 
secretary, I keep this stuff around. I've got a document that has the position descriptions of most of the positions, both functional and issue based um, that I can get to you, Maritza, so you can share it with the committee. Would that be helpful? Send it to me, uh, Kate, but it seems like Scott is asking for the floor. Scott? Thanks, thanks, Maritza. And Brian, thanks for what you're doing. Um, reorganization sounds even, uh, even though it sounds complicated, it sounds less complicated than when I was chairman. But uh, I just wanted to say that um, to those who are not, who are, who are sort of not familiar with all this, this might sound like a lot of complexity and, and hassle. Um, and you might be wondering why we have to go through all this. It's just important to remember that under Virginia law, the Fairfax County Democratic Committee has a role in the election of candidates and the nomination of candidates. And the chairman has a role in that process and also has a role to some extent in control of polling places. And because of that, it's very important that we have um, a structure in place to make sure that um, we have to have, you know, a structure in place for membership, but also a structure in place to make sure that the committee cannot be captured by nefarious interests. So like back in the 1970s, Lyndon LaRouche's tried to take control of some local committees to be able to manip manipulate elections. Um, when sometimes when there's a, for example, if there's a need for a special election, the county committee sometimes has to run the nomination process. And so, you know, we have to have these processes in place in order to have sort of an official membership list to officially make these very important legal decisions when the time comes. Those legal responsibilities though are just a very, very, very small part of what the committee does. A big, a big thing of what the committee does is get Democrats to vote in your local committee, okay? And so, um, uh, you know, it's a lot more fun than all this drama sounds like. We just need a lot of really, uh, a lot of people that want to get out and do good things in their community and make sure we can grow the Democratic Party and elect as many Democrats to get out there and join the committee. And you'll figure out all this other process stuff later. It sounds way more complicated than it, it, it probably is, but we have to do it that way so that it, you know things work right when it counts. So I, I just wanted to say that to everybody. Yeah, thanks, Scott. It is. It, it does sound super. I mean, we always add complexity, and, and and we didn't even really get into the DPPA reorganization, where you have caucuses to elect delegates to a convention, um, and all of it the same sounds crazy, right? So, um, and when you get into a presidential, it's even crazier because those delegates are the ones that actually kind of nominate a president. But, or uh, but uh, but yeah, it, it is pretty. It is really just simple. Apply to be a member of FCDC. Hopefully that's kind of it. And we'll have a meeting. Uh, you all will have a meeting on the 14th to elect uh, Mount Vernon leadership. And, uh, you know, as as you see fit. And then uh, and then we'll have a county uh, a countywide meeting in January of next year. And we oh. have simplified a lot of that, Scott, you're right. Uh, in terms of like precinct member versus at large and stuff like that, it used to be way more complicated. So. So now we have a voice from uh, the floor for Mark Kennedy. Mark? Hey, Maritza, can everyone hear me? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. You're mute, Mark. Okay, how about now? Is that good? Yeah, yeah. I'm in the car, so things are a little, little funny. Uh, I just wanted to follow up on what Chris Ambrose had to say. The, the, the magisterial district, when I was chair, along with the co-chair of Jack, uh, Jack Dobbin, there is only one chair, only co-chairs, if the committee should choose to do it, the, uh, the magisterial uh, uh, district committee. And the rest of the chairs for Mount Vernon, I, um, I think we had made up some as we wanted to have other other ones, but I don't believe uh, there were any other chair descriptions. I could be wrong, um, but uh, I don't remember that. But also those additional uh, chairs and people say chairs, they're not chairs. There's only one chair. Everyone else is a vice chair and those vice chairs are selected by the body. That's it for me, over. Anybody else? Wow. 
Brian, anything else you want to add, Brian? I know that you're having another meeting that you have to attend. And yeah, I do. I do need to get to, uh, to Mason. Um, but uh, but I, you know, if you do have more questions, uh, you know, send us an email at info at fairfaxdemocrats.org or to me directly at chair at fairfaxdemocrats.org. Um, you know, call the office, whatever. You know, we're we're happy to. If you have questions about the process and, and they didn't get answered today, you know, we, we we're happy to to help everyone understand. Okay, Brian, I have a real quick question. Um, we have we have submitted at least, because Maritza was really clear and everything on when we needed to get information in, to be that Tuesday of the reorganization week. Um, is, is steering still happening on that same Tuesday or is it being rescheduled? Uh, I'm gonna reschedule it. I, I think I'm gonna reschedule it for the week before. Uh, because the week afterwards, we're getting close to it's like the week of Christmas or it's close to it, whatever. Uh, but um, but yeah, I mean, um, <laughs> it I doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to have a minutes. yeah. Right. It doesn't make sense to have a steering meeting when when you know half of the the districts are are like meeting right. on that day to 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 vote a new a new chair. So uh, okay. so we we will be moving the steering meeting in December. Yes. Thanks, Brian. Well, thanks everyone. Thanks uh, for joining. I hope you have a good rest of the day. And uh, and if you. If, I think I've already said this before, but I am running for FCDC chair again um, uh, against my better judgment. So, um, <laughs> so um, mistakes, Brian. <laughs> make sure you get your application in, Brian. Yeah, I, I already applied, so I got I got my application in. But I, but I do want everyone else on here to to do that as well. So, thanks, everyone. Thanks, thanks Brian. Brian. Thank you so much, Brian, for coming and uh, for helping us understand the next organization. Thank you so much.